In this demonstration, we're going to talk about the training section and how to schedule out and assign your trainings, which actually comes under the training section. And then the second to last option here called view trainings. This is where those training assignments are assigned out to your users to trigger that task as well as set that renewal period and then that expir expiration period as well that triggers that renewal. So if you are looking at your topics here that are assigned out to your users, if it says none, that doesn't mean it's assigned to your users. If it says everyone, that would be everyone currently active in your employee section. And then you can even add conditions to assign it out to certain things based off of their user profile. A couple things we'll look at when we pop into one of these topics here is the title can be edited to whatever you guys call it. So feel free to adjust that as needed. If you want that highlighted on the profile, it will show a green option on their profile once they've completed that topic. So for example, here, I'll go ahead and open up my profile and show you what that toggle looks like here. This is what it looks like on their profile when that is highlighted there. It will show what date they last completed it and then highlighted in green here, right on the top of their profile. So if you do want that toggle on, that's just a great way to kind of highlight it on the profile. If there's an option for them to learn online, so that lesson content that they watch and once they watch it, marks it automatically complete, will be kind of housed under that learn online option. Also, the attachment in the app, currently all topics marked complete in the site will create that certificate of completion under their training section here on their profile. So any of these dates I could click on and pull up the certificate of completion. However, we also allow custom attachments as well. So if you do need to pull those custom attachments into the app as well so that they can download them, you will need to toggle that on here for the training topic. Um, if you do have any questions on these in the future, feel free to click on the info bubble and they do also give a little bit more detail of what's happening. The course ID is just an internal reference. If you assign course IDs, you're more than welcome to use this, just an optional field there. If you want to toggle it into a certain folder within your training section, you can do that by popping into your training section, going under your view trainings here, and then to create new folders, you just click this plus button right here. And then that allows you to see that option on your training to be able to toggle what folder it's housed in. The notes section is also internal just for your internal purposes. Instructions will display to the user that it is assigned to, so you could give them more instructions. These are typically better for things that don't have that learn online option, such as like a CPR first aid course. You may want to type in instructions to your user to say, please contact the admin to schedule your training and mark it complete. Because um, once they have that learn online option tagged to off here or none, then it actually doesn't allow the user to mark that lesson complete automatically. An admin would have to come in and mark it complete for that user. Also certificate text, all of, again, all of those generate that certificate. It does show the title that you type in here, the user's name who completed it, and then that date of completion. If you did want any additional text to show, you can type this in here, and then it'll show in the blank area of that certificate. You can also require a signature after they complete the training, and it does trigger an additional task to their home page to say, you have marked this training complete. Now I want you to verify that you've completed this training on this date and sign off that you've done so. Um, so this does trigger to the user's profile as well as that task to take that lesson online and then sign off once they've completed it. So next we'll go down to the schedule portion here and you'll actually see we have two different schedule options. Uh, there are two and one is the rolling and the other is the window schedule. A rolling schedule is pretty simple. Basically, if I assigned it today, which is November 30th, and I didn't complete it till tomorrow, December 1st, it wouldn't renew again until December 1st, not on November 30th. 
However, if I wanted that to toggle on a certain time every single year, you can change that by doing the window schedule. Um, just as a note, the rolling schedule does allow those every two years, every three year type topics. So you would wanna set those up as the rolling schedule. However, if you're just talking about an annual basis, you can use either the rolling or the window schedule. The window schedule is only an annual thing. It's not every two years or every three years, just a once a year deal. It's gonna trigger on this open and close period. Uh, so for example, you can click the open period and you can kind of schedule your topics out throughout the year without having to have them log into the site and then they have 20 topics every January. This allows you to trickle them out throughout the year where you can say, I wanna give them a topic from January 1 to January 31 to complete this topic. Now, a couple of things do come into play here. And that is whether you want your users to complete it immediately when they are first um, hired and or if they've never completed it before. So if they haven't completed it and you want them to complete it immediately when they're first hired, you will want to make sure that that toggle is on as yes. One thing to note here, if you have this on, it could potentially come into a situation. Um, so let me change the schedule where the user may have to take it twice. So for example, if a user was hired in January and we have this toggle to yes, they must complete immediately, they could take the topic in January and then it is gonna force them again on February 1st to retake that topic because the window has reopened. And then at that point, they're ready to go on the yearly schedule and next year it won't renew again until February 1st. There are options with this last offer date to include that January date if you wanted to. Um, so for example, if you set this last offer date back into January, it would allow that completion. So what this does is it says any completions on or after January 1st are gonna be considered up to date and now it would allow that completion accordingly. Um, and then the other part of it is making that assignment out to that user. So who this is assigned to is gonna trigger that task to their home page. If it is set to none, you could kind of set up your schedules, leave it set to none and it's not gonna trigger task. However, if it needs to go to all your current active users, you can set that to everyone. Typically not the case. Most people do the limited option and they're either gonna toggle the users that need to receive that or add conditions based off of their job titles, field offices, um, line of business, and so forth. So they can just add these here, select what field offices it applies to, hit continue, and now it would show who would receive this training accordingly. The last portion you're gonna see here is the included trainings. This typically isn't used very often um, mostly because if you are subscribed to the content, the lesson, the learn online option, they will watch the content and then it's automatically going to mark them complete. However, if you wanted them to watch acid handling and it also marked uh, excavation and trenching, I know these aren't good examples, but if you wanted it to mark them complete when they watch acid handling, it would automatically mark excavation and trenching complete as well. So just another toggle to say, if there's any trainings that are included, will it mark and complete that other topic as well? If that's the case, you have any of those, you're more than welcome to use this feature, just typically isn't used very often. So most of the time you can scroll past it and save your changes, and then that schedule is ready to go for you to see that it's assigned on February, gonna trigger the task to anybody in the Houston or Norman office, at every February through March 1st, they'll have that to be able to complete. Okay, so one other thing I wanna show you under the view trainings, under this first topic here, is if you have that window set up, the first time that it runs, it is actually going to insert that last offer date in as the beginning of that first run. 
Um, what that does is that's going to allow those completions accordingly from November 1st and ongoing so that they are triggered that task if they didn't complete it outside of the window. Another thing, though, is let's say that a user completed it on October 31st and you still want to allow that completion um, within that window period still. So in this case, I do have that assigned to me. I did complete it on the 31st, but it's still saying that I am due because I had taken it outside of the window. However, the last offer date will allow you to include that completion. So if you did want to back that up to allow that completion, you could back that up to like no October 30th here to make sure it captures that completion, save your changes. And then now if I go back to my profile, now it will say that it's in that expiring status just until December 1st hits whenever the window closes. And then I should be active at that point. Um, it will still show expiring just because I'm in that expiring range of the window. Basically, it comes in three statuses. Green, you're active when you're in that window, you're expiring period. And then once you get outside of that window, the task is still due and stays on their open task. It just moves it from expiring to incomplete. In this case, since we allowed that completion, it does show up as expiring. But once that window closes, it does kind of capture that expiration and they should be good to go going forward. Of course, if you have any questions regarding the training section, please feel free to reach out to our support team at support at kpaehs.com.